So we'll move on to the next method. It is called as a discounted cash flow method. So this method is, uh, you might get a two mark questions in this method in your exam. But in P4 exam or A FM exam, this is an important part of the syllabus. So this method provides much realistic value for a controlling interest. It uses cash flow that is available to equity shareholders, which is discounted at an appropriate rate. It takes the view that the value of the business is a sum of discounted cash flow. So what it does is, these are the steps to work out this method. Identify relevant cash flows, excluding financial cash flows. So find out what are the cash flows which are occurring for the equity shareholder and you have to consider the operating cash flow tax any synergy everything you have to add together you have to estimate the cash flow for a particular number of years for example like 10 years then calculate the pe over the the present value over this horizon discount them and add them together you get the value of the entire company from the entire company deduct the debt you will get the equity so this method works like this. What you do is you try to forecast what is going to be the cash flow of the company. So for example, we will take like the company is going to be operated only for three years. So first try to find out the cash flow of the company of the entire business. So you get some number. Then what you do is you discount them. You discount them at a particular percentage for example like 10 percent you then find out the present value of the cash flow now you add all the present value so total present value add all of them together so you add them finally you get the total present value of the business from here you deduct the debt you arrive at the equity value so this method is a, one of the most best method to be used but again this method suffers from a few drawbacks we will look at what are the good things and the drawbacks in the next slide So advantages, this is one of the theoretically best method. It can be used to value a part of a company. Weaknesses, it relies on cash flows and discount rates and both can be unavailable and you only have to estimate it. Difficulty in choosing a time horizon, the value of a business changes with the horizon you, you select. For example, you, if you choose 5 years, the value will be different. 10 years, value will be different. 15 years, value will be different. So, that is the difficulty in choosing the time horizon. Difficulty in valuing a company's worth beyond a period. So, after the 15th year, what is the value of the company if it is still running? That we never know. Assumes that discount rate, tax, inflation are going to be constant in this valuation period for example if you are going to value a company for five years we assume the discount rate the tax rate the inflation are going to be constant for this five year period so these are the big so there's another method called as discounted cash flow basis so these are the steps to find out the value of equity to find out the value of equity first you have to find, compute the free cash flow so free cash flow is revenue minus all expenses less depreciation less tax you will get the profit after tax from there less any capital expenditure and add the depreciation that was previously deducted you will get the free cash flow with this free cash flow you can uh, deduct it you can uh, you have to use the vac to find out the value of the company so you use the free cash flow divided by the vac you do you will directly get the value of the company but the problem is the value of the company includes the debt and equity. So what you here again do is you take the value of the company, direct the value of debt, you will arrive, the, arrive at the value of equity. So this kind of uh, directing the debt is only for this problem. 
in no other problem you have to do this so we will move on to the problem so we have a problem here it says discounted cash flow based equity valuation the following information has been taken from the SOPL and SOFP of a company revenue is 350 production expense is 210 administration expense is 24 tax allowable depreciation is 31 capital investment is 48 and corporate debt is 14 million which is trading at 130 percent corporate tax is 30 percent vac is 16.6 and inflation is 6 percent okay so these cash flows are expected to continue every year for the foreseeable future so the same number is going to occur for a long number of years our job is to find out the value of equity so we'll go as per the format which we saw earlier so we'll start from the revenue so the revenue is 350 so production expense is 210 administration expense is 24 we have depreciation of 31 so that's what we have we will first direct this so this will give us profit before tax so let's see how much it comes to 85 from here we will direct the tax so the tax is at 30 percent tax comes to 25.5 PAT comes to 59.5 so we have got our profit after tax but still we have few more steps with the profit after tax we have to direct the capital expenditure of the company so capital expenditure comes to 48 okay but we have to add back again the depreciation because that's what we saw in the format so our tax allowable depreciation is 31 so we will see the answer free cash flow comes to 42.5 okay so the question is this is a free cash flow so what are the next step steps that we have to do so the next step is to find out the value of the company so value of company so the value of company is if you take it is a free cash flow divided by the vac it is a free cash flow divided by the vac so if you take the free cash flow it is 42.5 but what about the VAC? The VAC has been already given as 16.6 includes the inflation. So as the VAC is including the inflation, so that is an assumption. Okay, that's an assumption. Usually in the exam they will tell whether inflation is added or not. But here we will say that the inflation is added on to the VAC. Then we have to remove the inflation part because all these numbers are a one year number so we cannot have inflation inside a vac we have to remove it so how do we remove it we have a formula for that what is that formula you might have remembered this formula 1 plus i equals to 1 plus r into 1 plus h that is this refers to the 1 plus i is the nominal so nominal is 16.6 percent equals to 1 plus r the real rate that is what we want to find out and and 1 plus h h is the inflation rate so that we know so we will solve this so this becomes 1.166 1 plus r and this becomes 1.06 so 1 plus r equals to 1.166 divided by 1.06 so 1 plus r equals to so the answer comes to 1.1 it means 1.1 minus minus 1 equals to r so the r should be 0 0.1 or if you represent as a percentage it would become 10 percentage so r here refers to 10 this is the vac 
without without inflation okay so this is what we have to use in our as a denominator if you use this as a denominator the answer comes to 425 so now we have to find out the value of equity so value of equity is the value of the company minus the the value of debt so what is the value of the debt the value of the debt is 14 million but it is stated at 130 percentage so it means it is costlier than the one 130 so if we solve it we get 406.8 so this is the value of the company hope you have understood it you so we'll re, we'll recap it again follow the sum as per the format you will get the free cash flow with this you have to find out the free cash flow divided by vac because the assumption is the same number is going to continue for a foreseeable future but the vac are assumption but are in the exam explicitly they will tell that this vac includes the inflation so we should not take the inflated value because all these values are single year value so we don't need to have inflation in our vac we have to remove it to remove it we did this and we got our real infl real discount factor which is 10 percent we took that number and we divided our value for the company and we got the value of a company at 425 this 425 is for the company we have to find out the value of the equity so equity is 14 million we can take that but it is stated at 130 percent at a premium it is trading so we are multiplying it by 130 we deduct it and we have found out the value of equity so that's about this problem so we'll move on to the next problem so again this is also a discounted cash flow problem a company has annual after tax cash flows of 2 million per year which are expected to continue in perpetuity so they are going to keep on going in the same number the company has a cost of capital of cost of equity of 10 percent a before tax cost of debt at 5 percent and then after tax weighted average cost of 8 percent corporation tax is 20 percent what is the theoretical value of the company is asking so which number should you take should you take the cost of equity debt or weighted average cost of capital the answer is you cannot take the cost of equity that does not work because the value they have given here is the cash flow given is for the entire company we can't take the debt value because there's no debt which is being played here the only value that you can take is the after tax vac because this cash flow is also after tax and it's for the entire company this vac is also after tax and vac usually refers to the entire company so our solution is like very simple so the value of company equals to 2 million divided by 8 percent and that will give us an answer that comes to 25 million you can reach me at my website wowacademics.com or you can also see my quora answers i am active in linkedin and in facebook page so you can visit at these places if you just type sham prasad and wow academics you will get all these uh, links in google search itself and if you like this video give a like share to your friends and if you feel that any points we have missed in this video you can post it we will try to uh, give an answer to you in the comment section itself or we'll also create another video for you so thank you for watching our video